Hi everybody, I'm going to walk you through how we did these four curved walls. They are going to be in the landscaped area outside of Music Center and have signage attached to them. We start with 2x12 Western Red Cedar, uh, clear vertical grain, by far the most beautiful stock that I've ever had a chance to work with. Absolutely gorgeous. We had our, our supplier mill it down the last eighth of an inch down to an inch and a half thickness, brought out back out to our shop. So we're going to hold the part down to the spoils board with screws that are down the center of the finished part because um, we're not trying to suck the part through the spoils board like we would a normal piece of plywood. We got 9 16 inch holes in certain locations for through dowels or through uh, all thread that's going all the way through the wall. And we do that in three different passes. You're looking at the last pass of a 9 16 inch hole with a 3 8 inch bit. So that's what that's all about. Then we came up with an idea of registering each part on top of each other with an 8 millimeter dowel. So that's an 8 millimeter bit in the drill bank and going all the way through. So you got the 8 millimeter holes and the 9 16 inch through holes for that all thread. And then we start outlining the part. We take a couple passes with a down shear bit just to, so that we're shearing the face down and we're not pulling the fibers up and splintering it. And then a through cut with a compression bit. And I told the program that those two bits were slightly larger than they actually are. So it is leaving it the part a 32nd of an inch big on each face. Once it's through cut, get the uh, spoils away from the part and then start the machine back up and let it take a finishing pass and take that 32nd of an inch off with a climb cut and for the most part it left really nice edge. Some of them it furred up a little bit depending on the grain but for the most part it left a really nice edge. And then remove the board from the spoils board and then take a shot of air and clean all those through holes out, the 8 millimeter holes and 9 16 inch holes, so that dust doesn't get in the way when we start gluing them up. And we have three walls that are longer than the deck of the machine. It's almost 16 feet long. So we have that spoils board that we had to splice together. And we had to bring it out into the driveway, spin it around, and run another program at the other end. The whole crux of the job was to register that spoils board in exactly the same location on, on each program. So we have a hole drilled through the spoils board at one end and right there that registers in the X and the Y axis at one end and then we have this, this piece of plywood that's cut to a precise length to register that spoils board to a pin on the other side and that was the key right there so that we have this thing in the same exact location because when we're running the program at this end we need that outlining tool to come right back to the proper location and if that board was cut a little bit long or a little bit short the discrepancy doubles itself and those bit that bit won't come to the right location so once we got that dialed in it was it, it came off quite nicely. So once it once it's all through we clear the waste off. That's that 32nd of an inch that we're going to take with the finishing pass. Then the finishing pass comes along and it left this little mark you will see in a second. We figured we'd grind that out and it wasn't worth trying to figure out what that was all about. So then uh, it was time to glue up. We're using the West System glue with the slower curing stuff. I think it's a 207. And we dedicated one guy, that's Wayne, to just mixing the glue. So we kept a, a fresh and thin layer of glue in a pan constantly. And there I am rolling the glue on. Miguel rolling the glue on the other face. And here we go. Then the 8 millimeter dowels after the after the glue is applied and tap that down in there. And that registration process made this thing possible. I don't know how we could have done, done it without the 8 millimeter dowels. That made it all work out really easy as you'll see here in a second. 
flip that thing upside down and stick it on the dowels. And the machine drilled it nice and square and then stack them right up. Now you see that there's uh, plenty of clamps. We leveled the horses real nice and then clamped those pieces of plywood at the end to straighten it out and brace it off to whatever we could in the shop to take any twist out of the wall. So each, each end of the wall is plumb and it's sitting on level ponies. We figured it was worth it to take the time to clean the, um, the squeeze out off so we didn't have to grind all that off with the sander. The Festool Rotex, what a great tool. That thing, that thing is awesome. He's got it on Rotex right there with 80 grit, grinding it down to this finished at 120. Uh, it took one guy more than a day to sand one wall, but it was well worth it. And that's it. They turned out real nice. On the truck, ready to go.